a tail of two Lugers. One that has absolutely nothing wrong with it from about 1942 and it's just here to be oiled. And then another one that has a chip missing off of the grip that I want to fix. Um, in this episode, I want to talk about actually how the toggle action works and uh, a couple of tips for beginning gunsmiths about how to approach a, uh, a problem like this. So um, let's, let's go, um, you know, put a little bit of the magic smoke on some of this stuff and see what we can come up with, shall we? There's a lot going on here. We have a complex frame contour where it stands up onto this boss in the back. We have to match the diameter of this hole. There's a lot going on. So difficult to work on something that's this fragile without immobilizing it. I've got this bottom screw down here hanging onto it and these two are just pressing into it. It's not screwed down, but it is um, immobilized. So you can see See how that's moving? That's just this flexing the end grain on this. So we have to be very, very careful about how much load we put on this as we're peeling this off. We just have to be extremely gentle so that we don't knock it off. Okay? So you have to be careful about how much load you're putting on it. So extremely, ridiculously sharp chisels really help here. So what am I doing? I'm looking at this thing in plan and profile. Okay, we've got the profile look, we're looking at it this way, and then the plan look, we're looking at it on this axis. So all I'm doing is removing everything that doesn't uh, conform to the outline of it. So we can get rid of a lot of this material because if we're trying to cut through all this, we're eventually going to make a mistake. And we're going to snap this off because this piece of wood, because it's so thick and so oversized, has a tremendous amount of leverage here right so we just need to knock this off okay very gentle and then you could also say well how come i don't have this screwed up against this piece of wood here in the back it's because i need to get around behind it especially when we check it we're going to have to have a place for the tool to run off the contour you see so we're getting close here Okay, here we go. Now we're down to depth. And actually, to be really honest, I kind of need to be coming this way a little bit. Wow. And yes, those of you that are looking at this chisel slips, there's a good chance it's going to take a nick out of this arm. But if you're looking at the number of, just don't do that. Okay, and part of that is, is this thumb here is keeping, is, is putting a check on how far that's going to go. But always think about your target and beyond. Where is the tool going to go when it slips? And I'm telling you that that's a when, that's not an if. Okay, so that's there. Now the next thing I'm going to want to do is very gently, we're going to backsaw this off just straight across to get rid of this chunk of wood right here. I want to get rid of this piece right here. So that, I'm going to use a back saw. Did a reposition here because I want to put the saw on my finger like this. Very fine tooth saw. And you can see it's got a very small curve to it. But again, we're not trying to, if we try to force this, And this is actually one of those places where a Japanese saw, where he cutting on the pull stroke, would actually be more advantageous. So I'm just going to cut it, turn it around. Now the one thing about cutting on a pull stroke is steering is anathema to people that have been raised in Western civilizations, and how you drive that saw. So I've got to do a complete redimension here because I want to go ahead and cut that piece off right there. Be right back. So here I am holding it here. And there is a set of teeth that have to go up 
inside this frame recess. So while we've got it set up in the bottom, you can see it's right there. This is going to have to get cut straight across. So we're going to have to go in a little bit further and remove everything that I've colored with the pencil. That's going to have to go away. There we go. That'll make a lot more sense if I light it like this. Okay. So everything here that I've colored with the pencil has to go away. And then we're going to have to pick the curvature of the frame up right here and kind of take that little wedge off the outside right there. Everything that's dark is going to have to come off. You got to milk your way into this. Um, and I don't even know how I want to hang on to this. It, it's all just a matter of, you know, how low do you go? We're cutting cross grain here. So saw cuts and rasping cuts with essentially a glue joint that's only that big. See? There's not a whole lot of glue holding this on and that's why this thing breaks a lot. You put this, you put this grip on the wrong way and tink, off it comes. So I've got the glue running all the way down into here and I know that, but at the end of the day, this entire piece is end grain and it wants to snap. Um, okay, so I'm very gingerly gonna go ahead and milk my way down here with a chisel and cut in until we're at that line right there. Now you would ask, why don't you take the grip off this perfectly good Luger? No, I love you guys, I mean it, but no, I'm not gonna do that, no. So one of the ways I took the end grain out was I've got it grabbed in a vise here and somehow it's not touching down here where my thumbnail is. But what that does is allows me to make slicing cuts and be a lot more secure that I'm not gonna rip this thing off. I'm just making slicing cuts and knocking this down. The other thing I can do, and I think I'm going to do it because I'm pushing in to make this slice what happens when I run out of wood? Does it blow out the end? Or does it tear this off and grain and tear down into it? You don't want to do that. So because I have it supported the right way, I'm going to reach around the camera here. There's my other hand. And we're just going to milk this down. Now notice at this point, we're not worrying about contouring this thing. We're not worrying about how round it is. As long as it stays square, that's better for us. So now I've just taken that piece off and I'll demonstrate. And we got lucky and pulled it out. We were able to cut that off and not have this be a problem. So maybe we'll get lucky and be able to do the same thing on the other side. So Bruno's going to readjust here. And now we've gotten lucky and we're able to actually grab that piece of walnut without getting into this same so i'm going to use the dish side and roll up and get myself a little um yeah okay that's all that took. We're just going to milk it off and we'll check frame fit here. And we'll see if we're getting close. And one of the things I want to be able to do is have this drop in. So you see we're, we're still not there. That's going to have to roll up like that. Right? But we're getting really close. So now we'll start going to the inletting black. And all we have is that little, that little bit right there in the back has got to come off. And then this will drop in this way and then once I get it dropped in then I can worry about contours drilling holes and all that other stuff while the stock panel is actually being supported by what's underneath it so that's what we're trying to do that's how much further we have to go is that much right there so where this wood is going to be touching down back here is going to be right up inside this crevice so I've got some inletting black on here this comes in a little tub and what we're going to do is we're going to spot this thing down. We'll spot it in. So we're going to get plenty of black up in there. I'm going to take the grip. We know that it indexes correctly down here. So we're just going to rub this. And here, let me rotate this around so you see it happening. Okay. So we'll rub this here and where it rubs is what we need to remove now i know that this needs to go up under here but when we're all done 
Let me see here if I can show it to you. There it is. So there is black there and black there. And then what we'll do is just start cutting that off slowly but surely. Now, if you have a choice of hanging on to something, always hang on to it. Remove only to black. One of the hardest things to do in gunsmithing is to go ten thousandths at a time when you know ultimately you've got to go a hundred thou. And that's hard to maintain that discipline to do that. Okay, we'll cut that, we'll cut that. Then we come back in and we spot in. And that happens probably 10, 15, 20 times. There's no way to predict it. See, so right now we're only off about that far down at the bottom. We don't have very far to go, but because of the leverage up here, that's quite a lot of material that's got to be removed. Okay, so we do that. Let that slide. And now we got another mark, you see? The black. Well, let me get the light off this. There it is. So you see that big black mark right there? That's what I'm cutting off. I just want to make sure that the the uh, the light is correct because all I see is this big shiny spot and you just keep doing that in out in out you'll get it very good all right sooner or later we're gonna have to deal with this it's pretty obvious that this cut rolls out up here because we're marking all over the place so we might as well just go ahead and get rid of that we're going to get rid of everything here inside the pencil mark. We're just going to do that because if not, we're going to be chasing that spot. Now, I know I just said one of the hardest things to do is to take it off five or ten thousandths at a time when you know you got to go a long way. However, in this particular case, it is really freaking obvious that this chunk of wood can't be here because not only that, we have the back side of that round hole. So I'd be willing to bet you that eventually the entire chunk from the edge of this blade out is going to wind up going away. Um, that's just without something to go by. Now we can, now we just said that and we can cheat because yeah, I took the grip off that other Luger and you can see that that cut goes straight out. It's not even on a radius that cut. Here, let me get that in the light right there. That cut goes straight out. So we can get rid of that. And the other thing we see is we have a step here. And this grip is an exact fit. Okay. The, diff the real reason why I'm showing you all how to spot this in is because not everybody just happens to have another Luger to copy. That's not a luxury most of us have. And in fact, it's kind of a rare luxury for me to have. This little tick mark right here this little black tick mark is telling me where the edge of that hole is so now it's time gently with a round file that is that is that circumference right so now I'm just gonna go I'm cutting straight towards not a lot of pressure take your time I'm going straight towards that hole Now it's chattering because it's acting like a bow on a violin. So it's grabbing it, releasing it, grabbing it, releasing it, and it's making it vibrate at a resonant frequency. So now I'm cutting up towards that black line. Now when this thing was new, it was all cut on a cut on a jig and then just set it there and cut it out but we don't have the benefit of that jig so what's going on is is we are hand making parts for something that was originally made on a machine so let me cut this swarf out of here we'll do a frame setup here and see what we got we're getting close we 
We gotta get up under there. Yeah, we are damn close. That's gotta come a little bit more right there. You can see that black spot. Damn close to dropping in on this side. We are, I could probably shove it in there and I don't want to do that yet. But we're coming real close, so we'll just keep going. There's the black mark right there. And we'll just keep removing the black marks. So we have just a little bit of reveal right here. We're almost in. And you gotta go this slow or you will wind up doing this work over again. Let's rub it on someplace different. Here we go. This is the first time in the entire process where this has touched down. Now it's slightly proud down here, but it's right on the money. It's gone in and I haven't had to force it. This is pretty damn close to where we got to be. And there's always that. Well, I could take just a little bit more and you can, but you've got to go slow. There it is. So now we can contour all this, checker through it, blah, blah, blah. You guys have seen me checker before. You know, here, I'll show you what that looks like. Okay. And then just checker normally, as one would. Viola. So the Luger is a locked breech short stroke gun. So the first part of the movement of the gun is back. As it comes back, this toggle runs up this ramp and it'll break the toggle open like that. And then the momentum imparted into the inertia of this entire motion continues on back like this. That cocks the hammer and it comes back shut again and then it relocks. Okay. The Luger is not unique in that regard. It has lots of things it's in common with. Let's look at this volcanic 1860, 1866, 1873 Winchester, for instance, or even this World War I Mill Serp has a toggle lock action. It blocks it shut. Okay. It's a Maxim machine gun. They're both kind of German. We're good with that. So uh, that's kind of how that whole thing works. Short stroke breaks it open, bang. A normal Luger, this safety function right here would actually be moving this blade, denying the sear bar its motion. But in this particular case, it's the grip safety that pulls this down. And what the safety does is prevents you from actuating the grip safety. That what differentiates this from say an artillery Luger is an artillery Luger does not have the fore end on this. This happens to have a fore end on it. So we have to figure out whether or not it's going to stop in semi-automatic. So I've got two rounds. 
in this mag and I'm going to put them in here and then I'm going to go ahead and earplug up and uh, glass up just because I've never fired this gun and I have no idea and you just you just got to make sure so it feeds that's a good sign we have lock back and recoil was not prohibitive so we can pop out and I'll load up a mag while I talk about this. Um, and then we'll be right back here. I got to load a mag and I don't have enough hands. We got about four inches of rain today, which in, in where I come from would have the governor flying over in a helicopter. But here is just, you know, the plants got wet. Bruno had to hang on to this thing because I didn't want to drop it. There is a shoulder stock option that came with this. Um, this whole shoulder stock... I'm not entirely positive as original to the gun. This 17 inch length of pole. It looks like it was kind of hacked together by somebody. We'll work on this. I'll make this look like this. But uh, I don't know. I've never actually activated one of these. So this is going to be my first time. Oh, look at that. That was a flinch. Why? Because I wasn't squeezing it, right? So what I need to do is just squeeze it with my thumb. Okay, in my defense, I was working on an L.C. Smith this morning, and I kid you not, it filleted my index finger, and I got a puncture wound right here in my hand, so I didn't get my hand all the way around this thing. It's not going to be in the YouTube version of this, but... Damn, if you're going to be tough, you better be tough and do it on your own time. So as we've seen today, lots of equipment around the turn of the 20th century was toggle lock. This old mill, sir, for instance, locks with a toggle. But the objective for today's exercise was this beautiful 1908 design, 1922 manufacturer Luger carbine. Um, as I said outside, it's different from an artillery Luger in that it has an actual forend that's functional. Um, the gun converted out beautifully. We'll deal with this hunk of whatever the heck this is on the back end. If any of you guys own one of these things, do me a favor in the comments. Let me know what your length of pull is. Because I think it's 17 and something inches. This thing's a bit long. But, as always, it's been a pleasure to jump down a rabbit hole with you guys on some relatively rare stuff that you don't get to see every day.